good day. This is Andrew from Nerdballoon.com. Welcome to the first installment of Andrew's old school retro game you probably haven't played. Maybe review. First up, first installment, we're gonna do Rad Racer on the Nintendo 1987. 87 was uh, a huge year back in the day for games. So just like the title suggests. Uh, because of the plethora of titles available to you that year, you might not have uh, stumbled upon Rad Racer and never been able to give it a go. Uh, 87 was a pretty blockbuster year. There was uh, Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, Legend of Zelda, Metroid, Castlevania, Maniac Mansion, Dungeon Master, Police Quest, Leisure Suit Larry, as well as Mega Man, Sid Meier's Pirates, Skate or Die. Just to name 10 or 12 games there that you probably played, maybe not, they're also worth checking out. But today it's going to be Rad Racer. Rad Racer is a pretty simple game for the Nintendo. Two car racer. Uh, it was a bit of a, a bit of a copy of uh, Outrun uh, for the Sega, originally in arcade and then on the Sega Master System. But uh, we're not going to talk about Outrun today, although I do think Rad Racer is a little bit of more fun than Outrun. As I said, Rad Racer is uh, pretty simple wasn't too complex, but it did have some very cool features. Uh, first off, maybe a little bit gimmicky, but if you look right there on the box, right where the arrow is pointing, it says 3D action. In fact, you could enable by pressing select while in game, a red-blue color scheme, like a 3D picture or 3D image, where they would interlace each frame from one to the next, red and blue, so that you would get a basic 3D effect. So if you've got some 3D glasses, I'll, uh, I'll hit select later and show you what it looks like, and you guys can take a peek at home. Other cool thing that uh, this game had that uh, other games around that time didn't for racing was uh, had the ability for boost, had the ability to change music in game, had a couple car selections, had eight tracks, uh, had pretty good graphics. Now one of the reasons you might have actually heard of this game was because it was featured in the epic movie The Wizard, which I'm sure everyone at the time was familiar with. There's uh, some screenshots here from in the movie where he pulls out the power glove and he, he plays Rod Racer with the power glove, which is a pretty incredible feat because the power glove was never that good a peripheral. And in fact, if you look at some of the old advertisements for the power glove, you'll notice that among the list of games they advertise being able to play, Rad Racer was one of them. So it did get some advertisement uh, along with the very popular peripheral, but still wasn't a huge game. Um, mostly because, as I said, some of the other big games that came out the year, and also those games were, were very much full experiences. Um, games like Zelda, um, Dungeon Master, those were full, thought out, flushed out games, um, brought a lot to the table. This was very much just a racer, but still a lot of fun. So let's throw it in and check it out. I'm gonna show, show you some of that stuff in game. Gonna get your choice of two cars. Got a Ferrari on top and an F1 on the bottom. Always arguments about which one's faster. Both of them are uh, same speed. Top speed is 255 miles per hour. It's a maximum number you can fit in eight bits. But uh, we'll uh, we'll debunk this myth or uh, we'll myth bust it later, whatever you want to call it. So uh, we'll pick the F1 for now. And uh, you get one one race to start, Sunset Coastline. If you want any of the other races, you got to beat this one. You can't choose what races you want. So you got to beat one to get to the next one. So we'll start off. Put the pedal to the metal here. And, uh, let's get some music going. You press down on the D-pad to get some music. Get a little bit of race time music going on. So we're cruising up there 200k. See the other racers that you encounter change their style depending on whether you're racing the Ferrari or the F1. So right now I'm racing without turbo. You get turbo after about 100 kilometers an hour by pressing up on the D-pad. Speeds you up a little bit. We'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison after to see, along with whether the Ferrari or the F1 is faster, we'll see uh, how much how much turbo helps you out moving along. In terms of racing game, it's pretty simple. Stay on the track, try not to hit the signposts, try not to hit the other cars, and you gotta hit each checkpoint before the timer runs out. If you don't make it to a checkpoint and your timer runs out, that's where you end, right there. Uh, every time you hit a checkpoint, you get more time added to your clock. You bump a car or hit a signpost just like I did, crash, 
the time you get back on the course, you've lost 10 seconds, and that's where the difficulty lies. As I said earlier, very much like an arcade stand-up. Simple gameplay mechanics, very addicting, very hard. Eight seconds, two crashes between checkpoints. No way you're ever gonna make it to the next checkpoint with crashes like that. You gotta do it pretty much with no crashes. Maybe one crash if you're lucky and you get a couple sweet moves in there. So we're gonna just, you can see me coasting here with some momentum until your speed totally stops. I'll show you how far you got. Not too bad for the first try. It's okay, let's try it again. This time I'm gonna hit up as soon as I can. And uh, you'll hear the turbo sound kick in at about 100 kilometers an hour. And we'll see how much faster we get to uh, top speed there. There's turbo. You can already see it looks a little bit faster. That should be more than enough to do a comparison. So let's back out, start again, grab the other car. Okay, so this time let's pick the Ferrari and uh, boot it up. We're going to start off same as we did the first time with the F1. We're going to try with no turbo. We're going to see how fast it is. We'll go side by side. That's a good enough place to stop. We'll try one more time with the Ferrari with boost, and then we'll do a side by side. Let's boot it up here. We're gonna do a turbo start with the Ferrari right off the start. We're gonna see uh, see if it's the same as the F1 with the turbo start. So we get a little spin out, hit 100K, turbo kicks in. Same thing, seems pretty fast. Catch up on the cars right away. Be nice to be able to control the cars. Okay, so now that we've got all the clips we need, we'll do some side-by-side -side video comparisons. Uh, first, let's start off with the Ferrari versus the F1, both using no boost. So we'll get them on the left and the right sides of the screen here. And let's put up some time code so we can actually see frame by frame if we want to. So they're looking pretty identical right now. Doesn't appear to be any difference in them. We'll pause it when they uh, get to 220 kilometers an hour. Uh, we'll see how long that took. Freeze frame at 220 shows they both did the exact same. 19 seconds and 23 frames to get there. As you can see, they both still have 30 seconds left on the clock. They're both uh, at the same power levels. They've both got 570 points. So those two cars are exactly the same with no boost. Now let's try them. Same thing. F1 top left, Ferrari top right. But this time we'll boost as soon as we can. And we'll see if there's any difference then. You can see the boost kick in there at the same time. It's also interesting if you notice they pass the same cars in the same places at the same time. Freeze frame again, 255 kilometers an hour. They've both hit top speed, 35 seconds left on the clock. Same points, same amount of time to get there. So two cars with boost drive exactly the same. Last thing we want to compare today is a car with boost against a car without boost. See the time difference. So let's dial that up. Ferrari on the right is going to boost. Ferrari on the left, just regular. Freeze frame at 90 kilometers an hour. Turns out boost doesn't kick in at 100 like I've been saying the whole time. If you stop it here, you see the boost on the right has just started at 90 kilometers an hour. At this point, the cars are identical. Six seconds, 17 frames in. 43 seconds still on the clock. They've both hit 90 kilometers an hour. Both have 40 points. So we'll unfreeze it and see how much the boost makes a difference now. Freeze it here and take a look. Car that's boosting say 200 kilometers an hour. Car not boosting only 160 kilometers an hour. So clearly you can see the speed advantage there. Also, if you notice, the points have changed. 180 points for the car without boosting, 204 for the car while boosting. So clearly going faster gets you more points. Gets taking more of a risk. Let's unfreeze and finish this off. 
Final freeze frame. Car on the right boosting has hit its top speed of 255 kilometers an hour. Dragged up more points and done it a lot faster than the car on the left. So clearly boosting is an advantage. But we've debunked the myth that either one of the cars, F1 or Ferrari, are faster. So let's uh, shut down this side by side and uh, take a look at uh, two of the cool features I mentioned earlier. The 3D and the uh, changing the music. Press select while you're racing to change it to 3D mode where you would get some basic 3D if you wore the 3D glasses that came with it. So I'll switch to that now if you have 3D glasses at home. Check it out, tell me what it looks like. Certainly isn't the easiest to play with if you don't have them on. So the red and blue is a little hard on the eyes, but with the glasses you might get a little bit of depth perception. Cool little gimmicky feature, especially back in 87. Okay, that's enough of 3D, I think, for now. Let's go check out all the different music tracks while we try and actually finish the first race. So let's try and get through this. Press down on the D-pad and change music, so we'll get some racing music going. Very sweet little chase music. Try the next track. Track two feels like a total jinx. Let's try track three on the straight of it. Okay, track three also total jinx. As soon as I change the music, I crash. Maybe I should stop pressing down on the D-pad, eh? Don't worry about steering. Well, we're not going to get anywhere with that many crashes, so let's try this one more time, see if we can finish this level. I'm going to switch back to the F1. Just looks, uh, looks a little bit faster, although we know it's not. Nice little animations off the start. Blow some dust out the back, give me some turbo. Always wonder if the little lines in the spike red. Animated to that layer if they're just stay on the road. Pass! Okay, we can still do it with one crowd. Just gotta get a race falls from here. Passing on the streets is easy, but you can't always wait for the streets to pass. So. Just take one or two chances here. Fuck off. There you go. Get on the inside now. That's another good one. I usually get boxed in here. Moves here, folks. We're moving. Doing okay. Keeping it on the road. This guy changes color. Been out racing all day. Now he's racing at night. Nice little change, I think. Show some, some high level bit of development and just. Not get boxed in. No, not good. 10 seconds, you think we're gonna make it? This is gonna be tight. Need to get to 90 kph. Okay, and get some turbo. Come on now. Get some momentum. Come down this hill. Oh yeah, 47 more seconds. Just barely rolled it through there. Oh, back today again. 
totally distracted, staring at those beautiful clouds. That sign's telling me we're going to turn right. Maybe I should pay attention. On the road right now, apparently. When you crash, nobody passes you. That's nice. You don't want to feel too bad about crash as much as I do. Nope. 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 Let me through. Last couple of corners here. Not a lot of time left. Do we have enough momentum as the music fades us out? Just a little more. Booyah! So here's course two, San Francisco Highway. We're gonna give this a whirl now. First time we're seeing it tonight. So it's probably gonna be a shit show. But when you finish, if you hold A when you press start, you'll get to start course two again. Otherwise, you'll be back to course one. Like I said, classic old school game where you just lose over and over and over. 3D? No, not this time. This is like playing a Linux console prompt. Green text on black background. Considering the graphics in the first level were pretty good, looks to me like they put a little bit too much effort into the uh, two different levels of background moving into the speeds here, and not enough into the fact that the road is the same color as the sky, is the same color as whatever's next to the road, and we've got what? Green lines that were painted with nuclear paint so they glow radioactively at night. Alright, we're going to have to try that again. Hold A, press start. This better work. Now while it was nice to be able to start at the second race again, as you notice my score has been reset to zero, so the only way to ever accumulate a very large score is to never die. Turbo. Get through the inside. Stay on the track. I suppose it's like all racing games. You really gotta learn to use your brake. Stay on the track. I mean, it's no cruising world, but in 1987, this game kicked ass. It's the kind of game that I like coming back to because, you know what, it doesn't take hours and hours and hours to quest through something again. You're probably not going to pick up Police Quest from 1987. But, if you pick up Rad Racer, you totally fall back into that exact same kind of feeling where you're just so happy you're playing video games, but so frustrated because the video game is kicking your fucking ass. Good night crash. Don't 
don't think we're gonna close to the next one, folks. Oh, look at that. Just barely rolled over the line. An extra minute on the clock. Lock tires is going to be the end of your night. So I'm feeling pretty good Nintendo thumb right now. You know, back in the day, I played this much with this kind of controller, you know what I'm talking about? Those concave buttons. Put your thumb right down in it, pushing as hard as you can. Holding it. Hour after hour. A nice, sore thumb pad. Quite like it. Unmatched. Any of today's consoles. Joysticks. Not looking good. I don't think we're gonna crash over the line this time. Let's see how far we got. One, two, three. Oh, look at that. We almost finished San Francisco Highway. But I think that's going to wrap it up for the moment, because uh, by the time I edit this and try and get it out for tomorrow, it, uh, it's going to be late. So all you got to see was the first two levels. There's eight levels in all. Not easy to get to, like I said. I haven't picked this up in a long time, so I certainly haven't seen those other levels in about 20 years. Leave a comment if you want to see some more levels. Otherwise, uh, you know, dust off the old NES. Find it on an emulator if you have to. It's not quite the same without getting the Nintendo thumb, but that'll do it. Uh, just visit nerdbloon.com for any other videos and also check out the podcast. Thanks for watching.